Welcome back to our Python course. In these videos, we're going to learn some basic steganography, which is the practice of secret writing. In the Middle Ages, Leonardo da Vinci used a type of secret writing called mirror writing, where he wrote his journals backwards in order to hide um, his data from other people. Uh, he also wrote in Italian uh, because he lived in Italy. And so in this program, we're going to write uh, a program that will uh, model this mirror writing and reverse our text to hide it from prying eyes. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go and open up a new window. And I'm just going to adjust the window size a bit here before we get started. Okay, and then we'll put in some comments. We'll put in the file name. Um, so this is about mirror writing. And so we'll name our file mirrorwriting.py. And we'll also put our name in the file and the date that we did it, which is January 1. 2016 so happy new year everyone okay so the first thing we want to do is write a function that will get the message from the user so we'll say def get plain text and plain text is what we call our message um, in whatever language the users speak because it's plain and easy to read so we'll say def get plain text and then we'll say plain text create a plain text variable to hold the message. So we'll say input and then enter message to encode will be the prompt. And the word encode means to change um, in some way. And then return the plain text variable. because we want to make it usable for our next function. So we'll need a main method for our program. And then in this main, we want to call the plain text message. So our first step in encoding our message is to get the message to encode. from the user. And so we'll say um, message text. Oh, we'll use plain text again. So plain text is equal to get plain text. And then we'll go ahead and print the plain text to make sure that we've it's been entered into the variable correctly. Print statements are a great way to test each section of your code. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. So I'm going to go file save as and then I'm going to go to my folder that I'm using for this project. You should go ahead and save your work to a folder on your computer or a shared drive like Google Drive. And I'll create a new folder and I'll say um, mirror writing. And then I'm going to say name the file. Let's see, we said mirrorwriting.py. Okay, now let's go ahead and run it after you've saved it. It says we have a typo. Ah, so we have an extra colon that we don't need. And we have not gotten a prompt, and that's because we forgot to call the main method. So we need to go into our file here, and down here at the bottom we need to call main. 
Oh yes, and I also see another mistake. No, that should be good. Thought we were missing a prompt, but so there we go. Now we can enter the message. So let's say we're going to send the message attack the troops at dawn. And there you can see that our message is getting entered into the variable and the variable is being printed out. All right, so let's go on to our next function, which will be to reverse the message to make it look like mirror writing. So now I'm gonna make another function called def mirror. I like to name my functions the same as the name of the type of um, steganography that we're doing. So what we need to do in this function is we need to pass in our message that we're going to reverse or mirror and that message is stored in the plain text variable after calling the get plain text function. So we need to pass in the variable plain text. And then what we need to do is we need to reverse the message. So we're going to use a loop to go into our message and then for each letter we're going to um, put it at the end of the message. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is to um, get the length of the message. So we'll say count is equal to len, which is the function for length in Python, and we'll pass in our plain text message. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll print the count just to, to make sure that that function is working. So let's go down to our main and call our mirror. Um, and what, after we change a message, we call this ciphertext. So we'll make a variable called ciphertext and we'll set it equal to our function mirror. And remember we're passing in the plain text, so we need to pass in that variable into our mirror function. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And we're going to type in attack the troops at dawn again, or you can type in some other message like meet me by the ferris wheel. And we can see that this message is 26 letters long. So if we count up A, T, T, A, C, K, the spaces and all the letters, including the period, we get 26. So we now know our count function is working. So we're getting the count. The next thing we want to do is we want to use this variable um, in our method. So we'll go through the, we'll use a while loop to go through our message. We'll say while the count is greater than zero, remember the first um, letter in our string is at index zero. We talked about this um, in our previous videos when we did strings. And then what we want to do is we want to get the last letter of our string and put it into a variable. So we'll create a variable called ch because it's short for character. And we'll set it equal to our plain text message, which is our string that our string variable that's holding our message. But we want the last variable, and so and we want the last letter. So we're going to say count minus one. Okay, so the way to access um, the last item in an array, and you remember a string is just an array of letters, is um, the index minus one. In this case, um, it, it, we're using count. Now, if that's a little confusing to you, um, you could change count to index. So what this is doing is going into your message, going to the last letter and in the message and putting that into the variable ch. Then what we want to do is we just want to add that letter to a blank string variable. So we'll say, we'll create a blank string variable called message text. So msgtext, and we'll set it to be blank. 
And then down here, each time through the loop, we want to add that letter to our message text. So we say msg text is equal to msg text ch plus ch. So what's happening here is that the first time through the loop, the message text is blank, and we're adding the last letter. So now it is um, it is just that letter, which in our message, since we said attack the troops at dawn, is a period. And we can watch the loop happening if we put in a print statement. So we'll also put a print, and we'll put in msg txt. And every time a letter or punctuation is being added to the message, it'll print it out. And then when the loop is done, in other words, the count is reached zero, then um, oh, we we'll, we'll just return the message. And we forgot to increment the count down. So we'll need to do that. So. Um, so what I also need to do in my loop is um, decrease the count. So count is equal to count minus one. So that each time through the loop, the count will decrease by one, otherwise we'll never get to zero. All right, so let's run this and see how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in attack the troops at dawn. I'm just gonna copy and paste it into my prompt here. And you can see that each time, the first time through the loop, a period was, was added. The second time, the N was added. Then a W, then an A, then a D, all the way down to the bottom, where our message is completely backwards. So each time through the loop, we're adding one more letter to the message text in the reverse order. So it looks like our message is working very well. And so we can go ahead and comment out this print statement because in this print statement, because that it seems like our algorithm is working well. Uh, now, if there's also a shorthand version of this case where you keep adding a letter to the same variable and overriding it every each time through the loop. And that shorthand um, version is msg txt plus equals ch. So we'll lose the shorthand and then comment out the long version of it because we only need it to happen once otherwise you'll get two messages. And the same thing down here for the count where we're decreasing the count number we can say count minus equals one. And then of course we'll comment out the longhand version of our de declinator. A declinator is something we use to count down. Okay, and then we'll run it again, and we'll also need to
and I'm going to paste in the message again. And there we can see that it printed out the original, so I know it was being entered. We called mirror on it, so we mirrored the message and turned it backwards. And then we called mirror again to reverse it or decrypt it the opposite way. So this is a very um, simple way to um, encipher a message uh, or hide and create secret writing. And I'll see you next time where we're going to talk about a basic substitution cipher. See you next time.